And now we're at tick watch day nine. Let's take a look at this wearable and let me show you charging and we'll talk about battery life and a few other cool features. Here we go. And here it is, day nine. It should be fully charged by now. Yep, 100%. I think it fully charged over 10 minutes ago. I had to brush my teeth and get ready for a meeting. So we'll uncouple that. And this is the Squid Game watch. And it also has a game built in, but that's for another video. Battery life, it's good, it's good. It just lasted four days. So the 24 means the 24th of October. Today's the 27th. We had a little bit of electronic ink essentials mode wrapped up in there, but you can see right here back on day five, I was playing around with essential mode. I call it EM or SM for smart mode. And then I fully charged it and unplugged it at just 97%. And that was back on Sunday. And then we went through Monday, day seven, day eight, Tuesday, and then today, day nine. Fun stuff. So at 729, it was down to 7% and it had an estimate of four hours left. And then I plugged it in, you know, battery health and then I checked it throughout. The cool thing is we're, you know, wherever you are in the house, you can open up the Wear OS app. It will communicate with the watch and tell you what the battery percent is right there. And then of course you can go down to advanced settings, open up watch battery, and then it gives you an estimate. So it's, it's not gonna tell me the estimate quite yet because it needs time to think, but it will soon. And it doesn't do that on the watch either. Yeah, slept with the watch last night. That was good, good. Uh, essential mode, I've kept the, the tilt light off and I turned off tilt to wake. So I did have it in a unique setting to reach that four days using smart mode most of the time. And I also finally turned off the 24 hour health monitoring. So if you swipe down, go to settings, uh, you can go to gestures and that's why I turned off tilt to wake and touch to wake, but kind of fun Wear OS watches. You can adjust that right within the app. You can't do a lot of settings and that's really frustrating. One thing I've enjoyed about the Apple watch and also Samsung watch and several others, is that you can do a lot of the settings in the app and it's much easier and faster because you have that big interface. You're not clicking around and going through all these navigation things. Anyway, kind of a bummer that you can't do a lot of that. So I'm gonna do a test. I wanna see if alarms will function while it's in essentials mode. It doesn't really say that in the documentation, so I'm curious to see what happens. And then I also installed another app right here, Cardio. So I'll take off my Phoenix now. We're in that for a while. The Cardiogram app is pretty cool. And I know people are gonna ask, they always do. This uh, watch band that I have on here is actually a TickWatch watch band that I got for, from TickWatch themselves. You can see right there, there's a TickWatch logo. I, they don't make this anymore. But I got it off Amazon. They asked me to do a review and I did a review and they sent me a free watch band. So kind of like a raffle. My watch just buzzed and it said, time to take a walk, aim for 100 steps per hour. It's good for your health. So if I click open, yeah, I have not gotten a lot of steps. Here we go, 218 steps. 243, well, it's gonna be close. I'm filming with this gimbal device right here. This is the Osmo 3 connected to my Apple iPhone 12 mini. Oh, well done. You have been active two of 10 hours. Keep it up. Oh, thanks, Take Watch. Yeah, I didn't have to charge the Apple Watch, so I've been wearing it all morning, standing four of 11 hours. Huh. Yeah, this was on the charger for a good hour. So I enabled raise to wake. We'll see what happens with the battery life. 
That's one thing I really like about the Tick Watch, Apple Watch, Samsung Fitbit. A lot of the watches and fitness trackers remind you to move. And since I've been working from home, you know, I just get in my zone and hours go by. I'm just sitting in my office chair all comfy. So it's good to get up and move and helps me uh, wake up. And this has been a lot more consistent. This meaning the Tick Watch Pro 3 Ultra GPS, AKA Tick Watch 3 Pug. That's the nickname I've given for it. Time is 10 a.m. Oh. <laughs> it's time to stand up and stretch. Let's take a break for 10 minutes. Okay, maybe I need to walk for 10 minutes. Hmm, maybe I'll do that. Take the dog for a walk. Anyway, fun stuff. I like the reminders to move. Well, I don't know about you, but my dog loves going on walks. And I need to test the Tick Watch against the Samsung, but that doesn't work. So let's take the Samsung off my ankle, take off the Apple Watch, and we can do this test. You still wanna go for a walk? Wanna go for a walk? The Tick Watch, 452 steps. Battery power is at 97%. Turn on. Oh, I turned off the bezel. We're at 80%, 1,348. Now it wasn't because this was on my ankle. This was charging for a good hour this morning. That's why we have the step differences. So we'll see how those vary on our walk. You know, it just dawned on me that you might want to know how it looks like and how long it takes to start a GPS walk. Let me show you. Visibility is great. It has auto brightness on the tick watch. We go to tick exercise, outdoor walk, and then it has to find the GPS. And then if we click on the three dots, we can set our goal for a distance. We're gonna go for one mile and go. Oh, GPS positioning. So I can say continue waiting and wait. And while we wait for that one, Samsung's a little easier, I think. You just scroll to the right with the bezel, walking, and then it quickly triangulates and grabs those satellites. Meanwhile, we are still waiting on the tick watch. You can see right there at the top, searching for GPS. And I don't have its phone nearby, so it's not cheating with assisted GPS. Meanwhile, we're still working out. At least now we have a timer of knowing how long it takes tick watch to get GPS signal. Still searching. There's not a cloud in the sky. I'm not near any tall buildings. I don't know what's going on. Maybe if I move around in the sunlight. So now we're in direct sunlight. You can see that nice OLED screen. Still searching. Oh, we got a little red thing there. And we're good. We have the green arrow, GPS found. That took about two minutes. Wow. See you in a mile. The heart rate's on. Wait, hold it down for a second. So let's see, communication, really important. Something's going on with heart rate, not on the Galaxy Watch 4. That says 99, Apple Watch is showing 90. Meanwhile, Tick Watch is showing 117. Yeah, it's about 20 beats higher, 26 beats higher than Apple. And I'm just walking, right boy? We're just walking. And then it keeps doing the uh, high heart rate alerts, telling me that my heart rate's off and I feel just fine. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know why Tick Watch thinks that I have heart issues because I don't. But hey, let's take a moment to enjoy those fall colors, huh? Gorgeous. Well, here we are, home sweet home after our walk. Good walk, huh? 
What'd you think? I thought it was pretty good. Oh, come on. Now you're just going to lay down and take a nap. So while he's napping, we can take a look at the stats from the Tick Watch and the Galaxy Watch. Disregard the blue band right there. That's the Apple Watch. That's not part of this video. We'll have to do another one, I guess. But I think Tick Watch users are not really going to be wanting to buy an Apple Watch, so I don't think I'll compare them. Did that walk wear you out? Huh? Are you being camera shy now? Yeah? Okay, I'll leave you alone. One thing that I really like is not wearing multiple watches. That's not part of the study. Not part of the study. Ah, that's better. I, I get addicted to ecosystems and that's why I was wearing four devices in the watch. So, tick watch, let's take a look at that one first. When you're working out, it's really important to have visibility of your heart rate, one would agree. The other thing is, when it comes to smartwatches, whether it's Tick Watch by Movoy or the Galaxy Watch by Samsung, a true smartwatch allows you to do just what I did. You can exit the workout and navigate anywhere within the watch. See how I do that? You can respond to text messages, look at your sleep, whatever you want to do. The Tick Watch now allows you to do that, and then you can quickly just get right back to your workout. So now it's auto paused and it just start it again, then it'll pause again. So we'll just stop that. Walking distance 3.36 miles in one hour 32 minutes, total 7,351 steps, heart rate 110, use up 1,381 kilocalories. So pretty good audio feedback on the speaker. Distance completed 336% because I told a mile ended up uh, walking with my friend Stefano and we did a little over three miles. So there's the killer calories. Wow, that's a lot. Miles, max miles per hour, which that seems a little, huh, for me, that font is a little hard to read. Oh, max speed, there we go. Then we have steps, the 7,351, which is pretty close, I logged the before and after steps of both devices. Then we have steps intensity. Wow, that is really, there we go. Steps frequency, max step, okay. Highest, what does that say? Highest elevation, 9,000. Okay, I am at not, I am not at 9,000 here in Utah. I'm at 4,500. Max heart rate, 213. So the heart rate was all over the place, and that was disappointing. It kept on giving me these alerts. I'll throw it up, I'll toss one up on the screen for you, saying I was having, not heart arrhythmia, but let me see if it says somewhere here. If you just open up Tick Pulse, and then scroll down from the top. Keep scrolling right there. So that was during my walk, that high heart rate of 174. It also thought that it spiked up to 195, which it was not that high. And then it kept on, so these are all the alerts that I had during that short walk. And then if I go to more, it has other, yeah, so it just kept on buzzing and buzzing and buzzing. Oh, see, these are 1023. This was not the first time it aired out. It's been airing out since I've got the watch. Here's another spike, 185, when in fact my heart rate was probably closer to 100. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that. If I click on suggestions, yeah, it's saying tech hardy and stuff, but I just barely got a checkout from a physician. Quickly go back to the workout and finish. Sometimes this one takes a little bit to save. So we have the step count, calories, average miles per hour. If you notice, see how much clearer the screen is. Then we have maximum anaerobic, aerobic, weight control. Well, cool. Map, and I can click show on phone. So Samsung will quickly update. I can open it up. Gives me that awesome little animation. See, a little fun factor there. I completed my heart rings, yay. 
then I can go to exercise and I can view that walking workout and then I can see all my lovely stats, beautiful graph, there's the heart rate zone info, and no heart rate spikes. Average heart rate was 90, max is 113, not 200 and change, like TickWatch said. And then we have workout details, et cetera, et cetera. Really cool stuff. And then I can do images, add images, pictures, really cool. And then when I was walking with Stefano, he said, well, maybe you have it placed wrong, I have it placed you know, right behind my little wrist bump there. It's not too tight. My skin can still breathe. It wiggles a little. About the same tightness and placement as Samsung. So kind of weird, we can open up Google Fit and then it gives us this animation, a little goal thing. So you can use Google Fit pretty much for everything if you want. And then there's my journal. So it should have the morning walk in there. Yep, there it is. And you can share it, your extra effort paid off, so kind of fun, energy expanded, all that stuff, and that's that's all you have there. Or you can open up Mobvoi and then have it synchronize. 8,000, okay. And then there's the exercise, outdoor walk, and these are the stats that you get. So you have elevation, average speed, average heart rate, it still shows that dangerous level, which it did not. That That's false because I was wearing multiple other devices and they did not indicate such a high heart, a high heart rate. Samsung didn't, Apple didn't, nor did Fitbit. So how can three, well actually four, how can those other four devices, include the Aura Ring, be wrong and TickWatch be right? I have a hard time believing that. It does have that cool animation that I surpassed my goal, kind of an arching thing. Uh, aerobic versus fat burn, okay, nice. There's the average speed chart, step frequencies, your cadence, nice. And the mappage, and that's it. And then it shows that it came from tick exercise, so that's good. Now as far as sharing that, you can share it and then do a picture or something and that's about it. You can't share the actual workout data like you can with Garmin and other features, but with Samsung, it's about the shame, the shame, about the same sharing. You just click right there, click share, and you can share the route, you can share the chart. So that's kind of cool, but you can export it right there. See, export as GPX file. And then if you do that, you can send your info to anyone. So the other cool thing about TickWatch is TickWatch connects to Strava. So open up Movoy, go to account, third party authorization, and then click, clink. So that's how I shared it with Google Fit, and then just authorize it through Strava, open it up. You're gonna open it up in your Chrome browser. It's gonna have you log in to Strava. So there we go, authorize Movoy to connect to Strava, authorize. Chumanwen.com, interesting. HealthTickware.com URL. Sometimes it works and you don't know. Yep, it worked, authorized. So I installed Cardiogram on the TickWatch, which is a cool app. It's kind of a community for heart rate. <laughs> so there's Cardiogram, and there's all the stats that it collected, and I can measure at any time, and you can go to settings, and you can say how often you want it to track. So if you hold your finger, whoop, there you go. So every six minutes, I put it to every 11. And then you open up cardiogram on the phone next, and it gives you this beautiful graph. And in a way, it's a little easier to read, and you can go to metrics, you can add friends, you can develop habits. Uh, it's pretty cool, and this, this whole thing is free. There is a paid version, isn't there always a premium version? But I don't pay for it. I just like how they have the breakdown of the heart rate. Whereas within Google Fit, the heart rate info, I think, is a little limited, in my opinion. I would like better. And within Mobvoi, it's all right. You can't hold your finger down and see that exact time the fine thing is it says heart health monitoring, no abnormal data when it was giving me these 
high peak, so that's kind of confusing. I do like the week report. That's nice. Just found another bug on the tick watch. Let me show you. So I was just working away and then I'm like, you know, I'm going to check my health stats. And I swipe to the right, touch and hold to add the tiles. Okay, I already added the tiles. I added them nine days ago. So if I do a long press, and let me change to previously used watch face. I've used that one before, the Zorin. Okay, swipe to there. It deleted my tiles. It just like lost them. So let me do heart rate cardiogram and we'll do heart health, no headlines. We'll just try that. So now if I swipe, whoa, they're back. <laughs> so I had this one before and then I had this one and then I had a reminder to go walk, caminare, and now we have cardiogram and this one. So they just like stopped working all of a sudden, which makes no sense. A key factor for any smartwatch is to be consistent, to be accurate and display the data, to function in the same manner day after day after day for the user. If the software and hardware can't do that correctly, the customer, me, the human, is not going to want to wear that watch. And there go the whole health metrics tracking. You can't track your health metrics if you don't want to wear the watch because it's inconsistent. And inconsistency often follows in suit with inaccuracy, which I've had a lot of with the tick watch, and it's only day nine. A little bit of the fun factor here. Here's the animation that I get when you wear the Samsung Galaxy Watch. It's been almost an hour. Get some fresh air. Try a stretch. Let's try upward stretch. All right, do five reps. Here we go. Okay, move the office chair. Okay, so we're gonna go up, whoop, and down. Was that one? What two, three, Okay, that's, that's two, <laughs> three, <laughs> four, oh, reminder, come on, oh, okay, it's on two, three, <laughs> four, still says two, you're going, going too fast, still says two, yeah, just a second, sure. Love you too. That was three. Still says three. Well, that was a lot of stretching. Okay, now it says four. <laughs> There we go. And they get that really cool animation that says, great, you're keeping active. And then, yeah, that's it. So fun stuff, fun factor, very important. For the tick watch, you get the move alerts. Time to take a walk, aim for 100 steps. All right, so now we click open. It lets me know how many steps I have and now I have to go walk around. Well, it's been a long day with the tick watch and Samsung. Time to check the battery life before I go to bed. It is now 2116. It's getting late here. So for the tick watch, we're doing pretty good. 56%. So I should have enough to go the rest of the night. Well, at least till the morning. Now I was running a test. I decided to leave the tick exercise thing going. The activity has been suspended for 30 minutes. And it was actually... If you look really close right there, 1700 to 2117, and I only went 2.25 miles. So I paused it and I wanted to see how the battery life would be affected. And I did the same thing to Samsung. Uh oh. It was on battery saver about a half an hour ago. 
Ah, uh, I think I pushed it to the limit. It went dead. <laughs> so on this battery test, uh, tick watch one with 55% more. And now I need to charge this because the battery is completely dead. When you see that, it has the, the cool little the plug-in. Here, I'll zoom in again so you can see that. I've never seen that before, and I highly recommend not getting your battery down that low. You don't want your battery to go to zero. <laughs> so I'll charge this one up, and then I'm just going to let this one ride, and we'll look at the sleep stats tomorrow morning.